the symbolism of centaurs and Chiron. A centaur is a being from Greek mythology with the upper body of a human and the lower body and legs of a horse. Although theoretically Greek in origin, they are found in Indus Valley mythology and medieval bestiary. They were painted by secessionist artists like Franz von Stuck and remain a staple of modern fantasy literature. In C.S. Lewis's The Chronicles of Narnia, for example, centaurs are depicted as the wisest and noblest of creatures. Narnian centaurs are gifted at stargazing, prophecy, healing and warfare, a fierce and valiant race, always faithful to the High King Aslan the Lion. But in J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter series, centaurs live in the forbidden forest, close to Hogwarts, but avoid contact with humans. What were centres symbolically? Wikipedia The most common theory holds that the idea of centres came from the first reaction of a non-riding culture, as in the Minoan Aegean world, to nomads who were mounted on horses. These horsemen are Mongolian. The theory suggests that such riders would appear as half man, half animal. Bernal Diaz del Castillo reported that the Aztecs also had this misapprehension about Spanish cavalrymen. The Lapith tribe of Thessaly who were the kinsmen of the centaurs in myth, were described as the inventors of horse riding by Greek writers. The Thessalonian tribes also claimed their horse breeds were descended from the centaurs, but a horse, in mystic terms, is a means of transport. See a horse video, a symbol of ecstatic flight. As such, there is also a theory that these were men capable of going into this condition. They were shaman. The Kalibangan cylinder seal, dated to be around 2600 to 1900 BC, found at the site of Indus Valley Civilization, shows a battle between men in the presence of centaur-like creatures, further indicating the origins to be shamanic and far older than Greek. Perhaps of most significance is the clear evidence that centaurs have an almost continual existence in myth and legend right up to the present day. For example, in the 12th century, Romanesque carved capitals of Mozak Abbey in the Auvergne, centaurs are also shown on a number of Pictish carved stones from northeast Scotland erected in the 8th to 9th centuries AD, for example at Megler, Perthshire, this one might conjecture that the centaur actually represents the enduring battle between those who seek spiritual experience of a direct, personal kind, the centaurs, and those who wish to deny them this possibility. Jerome's version of the life of St. Anthony, written by Athanasius of Alexandria, was about the hermit monk of Egypt and was widely disseminated in the Middle Ages. It relates Antony's encounter with a centaur who challenged the saint, but was forced to admit that the old gods had been overthrown. Astronomy as opposed to astrology a centaur in planetary astronomy 
is a small body with an unstable orbit that crushes the orbits of one or more of the giant planets. Centers typically exhibit the characteristics of both asteroids and comets. They are named after the mythological centaurs and were not recognized as a distinct population until the discovery of 2060 Chiron. 2060 Chiron was discovered in 1977 by Charles Cowell, the first of the so-called centaurs. Bodies orbiting between the asteroid belt and the Kuiper belt. The largest confirmed centre is 10199 Chariklo at 260 kilometres in diameter. So these bodies in the sky are comparatively tiny and in their hundreds of thousands. Centaurus Centaurus, on the other hand, is a constellation. It is one of the ancient constellations and means centaur. It is also one of the largest constellations. Centaurus was included among the 48 constellations listed by the 2nd century astronomer Ptolemy and remains one of the 88 modern constellations. In other words, nothing to do with the new astronomical centaurs. It even has one of the largest stars yet discovered, V766 Centauri, and contains Omega Centauri, the brightest globular cluster as visible from Earth and the largest identified in the Milky Way. Furthermore, the constellation is not just any centaur, but was named after Chiron by Chiron's half-brother Zeus, who placed him among the stars to be honoured for his courage and achievements. We will see why in a moment. In effect, Chiron is a mythical centaur and a large constellation. The naming of a tiny asteroid which circulates in a strange, perpendicular, elliptical orbit that weaves between Saturn and Uranus, as Chiron 2060, is somewhat unfortunate and rather inappropriate. So, who was Chiron? Chiron Wikipedia. Chiron was called the wisest and justest of all the centaurs, who was notable throughout Greek mythology for his youth, nurturing nature. His personal skills tend to match those of his foster father, Apollo, who taught the young centaur the art of medicine, herbs, music, archery, hunting, gymnastics, and prophecy. Chiron was also known for his knowledge and skill with medicine, and thus was credited with the discovery of botany and pharmacy, the science of herbs and medicine. Symbolically, Chiron is known as the wounded healer. He was abandoned at birth by both his father, the Titan Cronus, and his mother, the Oceanid Philira. But under Apollo's guidance, Chiron became an illustrious scholar, teacher, healer, and even prophet, tutoring all the Greek hero figures in their youth. As such, he has become a symbol of regeneration and self-help, the transformation of an apparently appalling beginning into a positive and heroic one. Indeed, in some astrological systems, 
Kiran has become a very key part in helping people to realise that apparently appalling beginnings can be overcome with enough will, the right approach and the right help. Kiran's uniquely peaceful character, kindness and intelligence help him in a form of redemption, where although he is the victim, the person who suffers from the acts of others, he still finds a way of overcoming his situation without blaming others or himself. Melanie Reinhardt, Kiron and the Healing Journey Kiron's purpose is to make us realise that our weak spots are not feelings we can excise if only because they cannot be denied. Even if you had a full frontal lobotomy, the event would still exist. And even if we could forget the experience itself, our bodies and minds would still contain the cutting feeling as a sensory or trace memory. The popularity of this archetype has grown as more people realise that playing at being the victim helps no one, especially the victim. So let us look in detail at just how many things went wrong for Chiron and why his half-brother Zeus held him in such esteem that he gave him his own constellation. The Myth of Chiron In the myth, Chiron is the child of Kronos and the nymph Valera. Valera wanted nothing to do with Kronos and so attempted to hide from him by transforming herself into a mare, but her attempt was unsuccessful as Kronos transmuted himself into a horse to mate with Valera. The product of this union was Chiron. So in the first place he is the product of a loveless relationship, a form of rape, a bestial act. Horrified that Chiron was the product of her unwanted union with Kronos, Valera begs the gods to transform her into anything other than her mortal self, not being able to bear the burden of producing a monster. The gods granted Valera's wish and turned her into a linden tree, leaving Chiron to fend for himself. So Chiron is abandoned by his father and mother, both of whom appear to regard him with horror. But fortunately for baby Chiron, he is found by Apollo, who takes him under his wing and teaches him the art of music, lyre, archery, medicine and prophecy. Apollo's twin sister Artemis trains him in archery and hunting. And this part of the story is essential, as it is telling us that even the most disadvantaged and apparently unloved can overcome the problems heaped upon them if they are offered the right help. But the help must be practical. Sympathy is useless, empathy not much better. Someone needs to step in and actually do something. Remember that with Apollo's guidance, Chiron became a scholar, teacher and healer, tutoring numerous Greek hero figures in their youth. Among his pupils were Asclepius, Aristeus, Ajax, Aeneas, Actaeon, Xenius, Thasus, Achilles, Jason, Peleus, Telamon, Pezus, Heracles, even Dionysus. According to Ptolemaeus, Genus of Alexandria, Dionysus was loved by Chiron, from whom he learned chants and dances, the Bachic rites and initiations. And there is more. Chiron saved the life of Peleus when Acastus tried to kill him, and Chiron explained to Peleus how to capture the nymph Thetis, leading to their marriage. Chiron is also connected with the story of the Argonauts, whom he received kindly when they came to his residence on their voyage. 
In essence, the kindness shown to him by Apollo's rescue was returned in different ways many, many times over to his friends and pupils. The saddest cut of all. Different accounts have been invented around Chiron's death. Some involve Hercules, some Achilles, but both accounts involve a pupil who unwittingly hurt Chiron. In Ovid's poem, Fasti, Ovid has the hero Hercules visiting Chiron's home on Pelion, while the child Achilles is there. While Chiron is examining Hercules' weapons, one of the arrows, dipped in Linnaean hydrovenom, falls on Chiron's left foot and poisons him. Chiron then tries to use herbs to heal himself, but fails. The healer cannot heal himself. Thus, though Chiron himself was not the cause, he found himself enduring a second injury, this time physical, that he could not heal, which occurred like the abandonment by his mother from no fault of his own, nor his pupil. And here comes the second key aspect of this story. Sometimes we can be wounded by the very people we showed kindness to. Chiron retreated into his cave and spent many years trying to cure himself. A terrible dent to his pride, as all his efforts were in vain. The gash left by the arrow simply would not heal. Being a demigod and therefore immortal, he was condemned to an eternal life of agony. But this was no one's fault. Tragedy is an inextricable part of life. Chiron's struggle is about learning how to live with distress. Distress not only from the injury itself, but the defeat that comes with the sudden impotence of his healing powers. The irony of Chiron's tale is that immortality for him is not a heroic state, but a curse that binds him to eternal anguish. Yet to learn to cope with the problem that does not have a prescribed solution is in many respects the most heroic feat of all. Conditions that impair us yet have no cure bring out the divinity in us, conjuring the true hero. Acceptance of his mortal self was ultimately what freed Chiron, relinquishing his immortality by submitting to a mortal death. And Zeus Chiron's half-brother, recognising the courage and bravery Chiron showed, gave him his own constellation, one of the largest and brightest in the sky. Sagittarius But this is not the end of the story, for there is yet one more constellation in the sky which is shown as a centaur, Sagittarius, the sign of the zodiac. The constellation as a whole is often depicted as having the rough appearance of a stick figure archer, drawing its bow with the fainter stars providing the outline of the horse's body. Sagittarius famously points its arrow at the heart of Scorpius, represented by the reddish star Antares. As the two constellations race around the sky. Sagittarii is Al-Nazl, the Arabic word for arrowhead, and overall the emphasis of Sagittarius is on the presence of the bow and arrow. Its name is Latin for archer. The glyph is an arrow and bowstring. Ptolemy has both Centaurus and Sagittarius, meaning he considered both important. But is the picture in Sagittarius right, symbolically? 
Remember, the pictures are up to the artist. This is Sagittarius as depicted in Urania's Mirror, a set of constellation cards published in London around 1825. I personally think Kiran is more deserving of the centaur artwork and I appear not to be alone in thinking this. More recent representations of Sagittarius simply concentrate on the symbolism of the bow and arrow.